Hello everyone and welcome to Joe Knowles Field at South Kitsap High School. We're glad you could join us tonight on this rainy evening for this high school varsity game between the South Kitsap Wolves and the Bremerton Knights. Tonight's contest pits two rivalries that date back a few decades and this game will be another page written for the record books. I'm Darren Bowden and joining me in the booth tonight is former South Kitsap standout Scott Yingling and South Kitsap senior Kevin Nod. Also joining us in the booth tonight is our new statistician, Doug Bolton, who is an instructor at Cedar Heights Junior High. Scott, we'll start with you first. What kind of game should we expect this evening from both teams? Well, I think it's going to be big plays on offense for both sides of the ball. Bremerton has number two, Larry Kimmins, at running back, who is an excellent athlete, and I, I, I venture to say we're going to see a few touchdowns out of him tonight. And they also have some size on the offensive line from Ben Nelson and Ken Bangert. But South Kitsap also has some size on the line with Jeff Rio, number 79, and Buddy Anderson with number 58. And I also, uh, I'm also looking forward to getting to see uh, number 34, Ryan Cole, to score a few touchdowns for South Kitsap. Well, the rain has picked up a, a little bit more. It's raining just a little bit harder. And uh, Kevin, what are some of your thoughts on tonight's contest? I, I think the SK defense is going to have its hands full, with, of course, with Larry Kimmins on the running back. But SK defense has really improved since the first game, allowing only seven points over the last two weeks. Um, they should do a good job, though. And the Bremerton defense, of course, will have um, defensive backs like Larry Kimmins and stuff uh, trying to stop South Kitsap running back Ryan Cole. Well, it should be a good contest tonight as the captains for both sides meet out at midfield. Tonight's captains for South Kitsap are number 24, Matt Morey, number 31, Josh Chilton, number 35, Sam Rogers, and number 74, Ben Christensen. Well, South Kitsap enters tonight's game with a record of 2-1 and one, with their only loss coming at the first week of the season, a loss at the hands of the Rogers Rams of Puyallup, 34 to 33, but the Wolves have bounced back to a back-to-back -back wins over Port Angeles and Gig Harbor, so the Wolves are looking like the Wolves of old. Bremerton enters the game with an 0-3 record, so the Knights are off to a rough start, but hope to turn things around this evening with a, with a victory, and hopefully they'll get into the win column. Bremerton will have their hands full trying to stop the Wolves' traditional tough running game who has led this year, like you said, Mr. Yingling, number 34, tailback Ryan Cole. And Cole has some big shoes to fill after taking over from last year's leading rusher, Roger Cooper, who is now playing football at Montana State. Well, Ryan Cole in his first three games has uh, over 300 yards rushing and hopes to add to his total. And on the other side of the ball, Bremerton has their big gun and number two, Larry Kimmins. And I can guess we can sum up the play of both running backs by watching who dominates the line of scrimmage. Uh, the Wolves' offensive line averages 241 pounds, so they're going to try and pave the way for the South Kitsap backs. As uh, South Kitsap looks like they have won the toss and they have elected to receive. Tonight's captains for Bremerton are number five, Joe Bollinger, number seven, Aubrey Neal, and number 78, Adressa Manning. As the Bremerton Knights break their huddle, they come out and getting ready to kick. They will be kicking from our right to left as we'll be set to open up the first home game for the South Kitsap Wolves in the year 2000. Back deep to receive for the Wolves, number 24, Matt Morey, and number 44, Victor Valle. Kicking for the Bremerton Knights is number two, Larry Kimmins. There's the kick, and it's going to be picked up by Victor Valle, but the ball rolls out of bounds, which is a penalty, so the ball should be spotted at the South Kitsap 35 yard line where, where they will take over first and 10. Here comes that big offensive line for the South Kitsap Wolves. And the South Kitsap fans should be getting their first look at Anthony Fine unless they travel out to the road games. This is their first home game, so hopefully, hopefully there's not a lot of pressure on this young man. He's a senior though, so he could, should handle it well. Anthony Fine has had a, a very good start this year in the first three games and he can throw a really nice football as number 31, Josh Chilton, and number 25, Tyler Mayfield, split. 
Fine comes up to center and they're in an I formation with Ryan Coles, the tailback. I'm also Fine drops back, hits Cole in the flat. He gets out across the 45 and it looks like he's going to be placed just short of the 50 yard line and it should be first and 10 Wolves. I'm also looking to see some big things out of number 45, the fullback for South Kitsap, Shane Starkweather, who had a, a few nice runs last week against Gig Harbor on some dive plays. Well, it looks like the Wolves, who are traditionally a powerhouse running squad, has come out throwing. As the Wolves break the huddle, as Mayfield and Chilton both line up on the right side, first and 10 Wolves, fine under center. They hand off to Ryan Cole, he breaks out the left hand side, and he's taken down at about the 53 yard line by number 22, Justin Robinette. That was a really good stick by Justin Robinette. If you, uh, if you were watching, he really charged that line of scrimmage hard and stuck Ryan Cole, who uh, isn't an easy load to take down. It'll be second down and about six yards to go for the Wolves at the 47 yard line. As they have a slot right, Cole is the lone setback. Fine hands off to Cole. He takes it straight up the middle for a couple more yards gain. And it's going to be third down and short. This Bremerton defense isn't showing South any slack. They're really getting in there and playing some good hard-nosed football. <clears throat> It'll be third and three for the Wolves. As the Knights have broken the huddle, getting ready for defense, Chilton leaves the huddle early, splits right. They're going with a power eye formation. They hand the ball off to Cole, he hits up the right side, but he is stopped. He's gonna be short of the first down. Nice tackle by number 87, Ben Tolliver. Bremerton did a nice job of getting through that line and they stopped Ryan Cole and it's gonna be fourth down and about a yard to go and it looks as if the Wolves are gonna go for it early on fourth down. That was an impressive stop by Bremerton. That was, that was power eye, that was a full house tackle over to the right side. Clutch play on third down, but now full. Now South will have a clutch play here for the fourth down. They need to make this or Bremerton will take over. And the Wolves go with a power eye formation. They hand off to Cole, he split, gets out to the right side. He takes off, cuts up the middle, and he gets down just short of the 30 yard line. It'll be placed at about the 31. First it'll down, South a, Kitsap. It'll be a first down for, for the Wolves. That play right there just illustrates Ryan Cole's ability. He can just he can take hits and keep going, lose his balance, get up and go. This kid's going to be a great running back. So after the first play of scrimmage being a pass, the Wolves have started to run the ball like they traditionally do. Chilton and Mayfield split to both sides. I formation. They hand the ball off to Cole, and, oh, and he slips. Well, they don't call it slippery rock for... For anything there, Darren. <laughs> so it looks like the uh, the weather is having an effect early on here. That field's a little bit slippery out there, trying to get their footing down. And it'll be second down and eight yards to go for the Wolves. And to get on that play, number 87, Ben Tolliver had the stop. He's been all over the field so far with many key tackles. The Wolves stay in an eye formation. Cole comes out for a play. Ryan Garrison's at fullback. Fine with the nice fake. He's being rushed, and he scrambles. He still gets the ball off intended for R.J. Lang, but he overthrows him incomplete. The defense didn't fall for that play-action pass, but it was a nice way for Fine to get that rid of that ball before he got sacked. The right side of that defensive line stayed home, and they weren't fooled by that, by that fake, and they stayed with it, and they were able to get to the passer, and Fine had to throw the ball away. That bootleg is token South Kitsap, and that defense for Bremerton, they didn't bite at all. Anthony Fine did a nice job avoiding the tackles and getting the ball off before he got sacked for a five-yard loss. So we have third down and eight yards to go for the Wolves. Most likely a passing situation. Fine hands the ball off. He hands the ball off to number 24, Matt Morey. He's still on his feet. He gets it to the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown, South Kitsap. 
that was a nice job by Matt Morey. Way to keep his feet going and break those tackles. That was an excellent run by number 24, Matt Morey, who isn't the biggest guy on the field, but man, that guy's got a lot of heart, and he just kept going, breaking tackles. He's got some pretty good moves. He was mad at about the 20-yard line, but he kept driving those knees, and he ended up getting into the end zone for six points as the Wolves line up for the PAT, and the Wolves have a new kicker in number five, Gary Schneider. Well, Darren, the question of the night is Gary Schneider's kicking, but I'm waiting to see number 81, Jimmy French, the newly acquired soccer player that South Kitsap uh, recruited to play football and kick. Well, we might be seeing Jimmy later as the kick is good, the PAT is good, and the South Kitsap Wolves are on the board early with eight minutes, 36 seconds left in the game, and they're ahead seven nothing, and again, gentlemen, we see that the power running attack for the South Kitsap Wolves was just too much to stop. And that touchdown by Matt Morey was a nice run. Uh, this is his first year at running back for South. Last year he only, he only played cornerback, so it was a nice job to try out this year for running back. That was about a 31-yard touchdown run by Matt Morey. So the combination of Morey and Ryan Cole have done the job so far for South Kitsap, but again, we can see that that big offensive line for South Kitsap has been making some holes for those runners. So a good combination leads to six points. Back deep to receive as Snyder kicks the ball. Number two, actually that's number 21, Anthony Ragsdale. He gets the ball and he's still heading up on the right side of the field, a nice run. He makes it up near the 40 yard line where the Bremerton Knights will take over first down and 10. That was a great open field tackle by the kicker, Gary Snyder. Last man standing from the seven points, so it was a nice tackle. We were just talking about keeping your knees moving and uh, what a great run Matt Morey had. Well, uh, number 24 for Bremerton just had a great run. He just kept his feet going and kept going. At quarterback for Bremerton is number five, Joe Bollinger. As they come out, man in motion, they run the option. They pitch the fumble. fumble. There's a fumble on the play. South and recovers. South Kitsap Wolves have picked it up. What a break for South Kitsap. A fumble on the 40-yard line that will set them up for good field position. You know, but I don't think Bremerton's going to be affected by that. They're going to be in the, They're going to be in this game. They're fast. They're good athletes. I think we got a lot more football to look, look forward to. Number 91, Lowell Bosch with the recovery. Well, early on in the game, Turnovers have plagued the Bremerton Knights as they fumble on the first play from scrimmage, and the ball is marked at the 40-yard line where the Wolves take over first and 10 as they come out in an I formation. Fine takes a three-step drop. He looks to pass over to number 31. Josh Chimney catches it. Completed pass. It'll be marked down at the eight-yard line. Nice footwork, by jo nice footwork by Josh Chilton to keep his feet in bounds for that catch. Number 15, Anthony Fine, the quarterback for South. Did he thread the needle or what? That was a, that was a shot on a dime right there. That was a great spiral thrown by Anthony Fine on a 32-yard completion down to the eight where the Wolves will have first and goal, and they're driving again. That's one way I think Anthony Fine might be better than uh, SK legend Jimmy Newell, quarterback. He seems to have a better arm and better accuracy than Jimmy Newell. Jimmy Newell is faster and more uh, agi agile and could run the bootleg better, but Fine seems to have a better arm. Garrison comes in for the power eye. Ryan Cole gets the ball, takes the ball up the middle, keeps driving his feet, and he takes it in for the touchdown, but there's a flag on the play. Hold everything, there's a flag on the play, but it might be a face mask. I believe that as Cole was driving into the end zone, that the defense might have grabbed his face mask. But we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, SK Space celebrating. Mask. That looks to be a defensive penalty. We have seen example after example of how to keep your feet moving under pressure of tacklers. That's the third time tonight in the first five minutes of the first quarter where guys have just kept their feet moving and kept going. Well, turnovers will kill you on, the, on either side of the ball. And as the Bremerton Knights fumbled on their first play from scrimmage, two plays later, the Wolves are back in the end zone as Gary Snyder set up for the PAT, and he, it is no good, no good, it's wide left, but the 
South Kitsap Wolves score again with 8-11 remaining in the first quarter, and the score is 13 to nothing South Kitsap. And those two touchdowns could possibly be accredited to the SK uh, football weight program. Both players seemed to have strong legs and kept their legs moving and shielded off those tacklers. And you know, uh, I don't want to try to be partial here, but I was a, I was a lineman here at South Kitsap, and I want to give some credit uh, to the offensive line on that who just created huge holes and uh, allowed those guys to keep their feet going and go in there. Not to mention that when the Wolves recovered that fumble, they were in, in their, on the Bremerton side of the ball, giving them excellent, excellent field conditions. Uh, and good territory to score. So uh, the Wolves have capitalized on a Bremerton turnover and have punched it into the end zone. Good, good field position is always a key to the game. So the Wolves come out ready to kick again. And I believe we're going to see Jimmy French doing some of the kicking right now. Well, let's see what he can do. He's used to kicking that big round soccer ball. It's sitting on the ground, just like he said in the paper. Let's see if he can get that football up in the air and down the field. I think he can. Jimmy French is a 5'10", 165-pound senior as he kicks it down straight down the middle as number 24, Reggie Williams, receives the kick. He gets about 12 yards on the gain. Looks like they're going to mark it at about the 27-yard line, the 26-and-a-half-yard line where the Bremerton Knights will take over first and 10. And let's see if they can hang on to the ball this time. You know, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm looking for big things from this Bremerton offense. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things about them. They got a lot of good athletes, a lot of speed. Uh, they do have a good size offensive line. I'm, I'm anxious to see what they can do. They run the option left. Number seven, Aubrey Neal has come in at quarterback. And the option went nowhere as the Wolves had every spot covered. And in fact, Bremerton lost a couple yards on the play. And it's going to be about second down and 12 yards to go. So a great defensive stance here early by the South Kitsap Wolves. Number 24, Matt Morey came up from the safety position to make that stop. Good, good field coverage to come up all the way there. Aubrey Neal remains in there at quarterback. Three backs in the backfield. They hand off to number 22, Justin Robinette. He gets up to the right side. He breaks free. And he is taken out at about the 45-yard by 45-yard line by number 24, Matt Morey. And there we see uh, Darren that you know Matt, Moore, Matt Morey had the tackle again, but this time it was way deep down the field. You like to see him come in the backfield to make those tackles instead of in his backfield. We're going to see that a lot this game on both sides of the ball. You give, uh, you give these running backs a chance to get outside, and it's a, it's a sprint to the lines, you know. As soon as the Knights lose a couple yards, they gain a big first down. So the Knights are on the move. As they come out with three backs, Neal runs out to the left. He, he's got a keeper, and he's taken down by number 19, R.J. Lang. Great tackle by Lang there to, to keep up with the speed of the quarterback there. Since Aubrey Neal is coming to the game, if they haven't handed it off to one of the running backs, he's kept it on a keeper rolling out right or left. So they've got a lot of options that they're showing this South Kitsap defense tonight. And Bremerton Knights uh, quarterback Aubrey Neal is actually a young quarterback. He's only in the 10th grade. So we'll see if the ex lack of experience you know, hurts the Bremerton Knights. They come out with three backs again. They run the option. They hand it off straight up the middle to number 25. Taba bro play as he punches the ball up the middle close to that first down marker. It's going to be second down and short yards. Once again, Darren and Kevin, another example of a guy keeping his feet moving and keep going. I thought he was going to be down on the line of scrimmage, but he kept his knees pumping and he got a good 10 yard gain. Actually, it's, it'll be third down and one yard to go as number 32, Taylor and Poland Smith splits right three running backs in the backfield. They hand the ball straight up the middle, and Bremerton will have a first down. The ball was handed off to number two, Larry Kimmons. A gain of about five yards down to the 42-yard line. So Bremerton has crossed over into South Kitsap territory, and they've got a nice drive going here with 5.39 remaining in the first quarter. 
They hand the ball up the middle again, and there he goes! Larry Kimmins takes the ball straight up the middle off the dive option, and he gets a big gain, close to a 20-yard gain, down to the South Kitsap 20-yard line. Gary Snyder with the touchdown saving tackle there as Larry Kimmins broke all the way through the South Kitsap defense. South is going to have to be on their toes tonight. They're running a full house, wishbone option. They're running everything back there. Uh, Bremerton's got a lot of tricks up their sleeve, and I think they're going to do pull everything out of the book to try to beat South. Well, Bremerton is running this option to perfection as they're driving close to that end zone as they come out with three backs again. They hand the ball off to number 21, Anthony Ragsdale, as he takes it off right tackle. For a short gain, it'll be second down. Like you said, Scott, Bremerton's going to pull out all the stops to try to beat South after last year's 62 to nothing loss to South at home uh, over in Bremerton. It was, they're, you know, kind of a pride factor to come back and beat South tonight. Second down as Larry Kimmins takes a break, heads to the sideline. It'll be second down and six yards to go for the Knights as they split in Poland Smith to the left. They are going with this three back set. They hand off, it's a keeper. It's a keeper by Aubrey Neal. They fake that handoff to the right side and a keeper to the left. But for a short gain, it'll yeah, be third down for Bremerton. Yeah, South Kitsap did a good job rooting that play out. They didn't fall for that uh, play action or the ha fake handoff. As uh, number five, Gary Snyder comes out of the game here. So they're making a substitution. and. Larry Kimmons looks like he's coming back into the game. The tackle was made by number 69, Ben Duncan, the uh, defensive lineman. So the Knights come out with a three back set. Neal under center. They hand the ball up the middle to number 25, Taba Broplay. And I believe he didn't gain very much on that one either. It looks like it's going to be fourth down and short yards to go for the Bremerton Knights. South Kitsap did a nice job of gang tackling there, but also that, that Bremerton uh, offensive line, they, they did have a good initial push, but everything just kind of got jammed up in the middle there. So a key stand here by the South Kitsap defense and a crucial play for the Bremerton Knights as they come out in a three-back set. Neal's on the keeper. He pitches the ball out to the right side. And I believe that the Wolves have stopped the Knights. It doesn't look like he made it, Darren. Looks like they're going to be just a bit short. And I believe that they're going to call for a measure here. That was fourth down. So if they didn't make it, SK takes over. Oh, uh, they've determined, yes, they didn't make it. So there's going to be a turnover and downs. Well, this, uh, this is going to be an interesting situation for South Kitsap. They're going to be uh, down up against their own uh, goal line. Let's see what they can do. Let's see if they can drive, or let's see if this Bremerton defense can come to work and uh, really pound on them. Well, Bremerton made a nice run down the field, but they were stopped a little bit short there of the goal line, and the Wolves are deep in their own territory. I don't know. You might be sensing some uh, desperation there coming down 13 nothing really quick. They needed the score there, so they felt they had to go for fourth, even though they were in somewhat a field goal range. There's a fumble on the play, but I believe Fine fell on it. These are the factors that both uh, South and Bremerton are going to have to rule in here. You know, it's a, it's a slippery field. It's muddy because not only does the football team uh, play on this, but the soccer team, the girls' soccer team. So, And it's raining now, so we're going to see a lot of fumbles and a lot of slip in the night. Well, we've had some fumbles from both sides of the ball, and uh, it looks as if the rain is going to play a key factor here in today's game as Mayfield and Chilton both split to the right. And the Wolves come out in an I formation. They hand the ball off to Cole, straight up the middle. He powers his way up for a few yards, maybe a gain of four. It'll be third down for the Wolves. Every young kid in the stands right now should be watching Ryan Cole and Larry Kimmins from Bremerton. They're both just, they're getting, when they get the ball, they're driving their feet, they're going hard. And I, I don't know if either of them have had uh, a stop for a loss yet tonight. And speaking of the fans, uh, this rain kept them away for a little bit at the beginning, but it seems that the nice crowd's uh, coming out for the SK game, as they always do. And the rain is really coming down now as the Wolves have third and long, deep in their own territory. Third and eight. Fine with the keeper, rolls out to the right. He's being rushed out of the pocket. He's grounded. He's going to be taken down. What a play by the Bremerton defense. 
Vine scrambled out to the right side. If you're an SK fan, you just you you think you think that Vine didn't go into the end zone there because he was only a few yards from that end zone. That could have been a safety, but thankfully he stayed out of the end zone. Another factor we're gonna have to come into play tonight is the wind. Up here in the crow's nest, we can kind of see down on the field the wind is blowing, so that's gonna come into factor on which which way the team's going uh, for punts and also passes. Well, the Wolves are going to have fourth down and long as they'll be punting from their own end zone. So the Bremerton Knights should have good field position. The kick is up. Oh, a, good a good punt. The ball is fielded at the 40-yard line by number 24, Reggie Williams. But Nowhere he is taken down after about a five-yard gain. So the Knights will take over <coughs> after the punt at the 35-yard line in South Kitsap Territory. So Bremerton has good field position, and if they do anything like they did on their last drive, they've got a good chance of getting that ball into the end zone, and they need it being down 13 to nothing. I'm going to give a little credit to Josh Chilton on that punt, too. That was a 35-yard punt on there from the back of the end zone. Yeah, in the high school game, the punts don't always go as far as they do in the NFL game, so you're happy with a nice punt like that in the high school game. Ball is handed off to the right side as Bremerton gets a nice gain on the play. But to go back to the punt for a little bit, that punt coverage by SK really uh, held the Knights right there. They didn't have a chance to return that at all. Their special teams are legendary here. As the Bremerton Knights just gained about six yards on the play, it's gonna be second down and four yards to go. Again, they go with the three back set. Aubrey Neal under center. They hand the ball off to the right side. Looked like it was number 22, Justin Robinette. That's close to a first down. And he almost gets the first down. It looks like he might just be a little short. No, they're In fact, they're going, they're going to have a measurement here. I'm going to look for a, maybe a dive play or a, a, a triple option. They might they might even hand it off to number two, Larry Kimmons, to go up for that dive play like they did last time when he got that big gain. Yeah, so far the running plays to the running backs have been doing good, but when he tries to bootleg it, Aubrey... Aubrey Neal uh, has been stopped, so I mean they might go to the running backs just because they, they that's been going good. So I'd stay with the running backs. One thing that's been absent this uh, this game from Bremerton is the passing. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to see the arm of the Bremerton quarterback and see what they got for air. Well, their running game has been very successful tonight, and it looks as if the Knights did get a first down. So the Knights will have a first down and 10 yards to go from the 25 yard line, as that is the end of the first quarter. And the South Kitsap Wolves lead the Bremerton Knights 13 to nothing as they switch sides on the field. I'd just like to remind you folks that the first episode of Wolf Tracks, our student-produced magazine show, will be shown this coming Thursday at 7.30 in the evening, right here on BKAT, Channel 3 in Port Orchard and Channel 12 in Bremerton. Featured in this new edition, find out how recent levy failures are impacting our junior high extracurricular activities. We'll take a look at SKHS fashion trends, and if you've never heard of fingerboards, better tune in and check it out. That's Wolf Tracks, Thursday evening at 7.30, all school year. Well, just a recap of the first quarter. We saw the South Kitsap Wolves take the ball in with a touchdown run. Ryan Cole scored early in the first possession that the Wolves had. On the first play of scrimmage, Bremerton fumbled on an option play, and two plays later, Matt Morey ran the ball in from about 20 yards. Actually, I think it was about 30 yards. But the Bremerton Knights are threatening here as they have a first and 10 at the 25 yard line. Neal rolls out to the left, he pitches the ball, there's a fumble on the play, but it's recovered by Bremerton. But they the ball lose was it. pitched to Anthony Ragsdale, but he was able to fall on the ball, but they're going to have a second down and long ways to go. They lost a lot of yards on that play and that could be damaging to a drive that's been moving pretty good since the, the punt. Once again, fellas, uh, the, the weather plays a key factor in there that that looked like it was going to be a good pitch, but it came off, and that wetness hit it, and boom, it's over his head. And the Wolves had that option play snuffed out and looked like Neal had a little difficulty make his de making his decision, and he pitched the ball at the last minute. So it's second down and 21 yards to go. They hand the ball off to number 21, Anthony Ragsdale, but he doesn't get far. That was a huge stick from number 91, Lowell Bosch. In fact, I don't think he got a gain on that, and it's going to be third down and 21 yards to go. So 
As they switch ends on the field, the South Kitsap Wolves have done a nice job with their defensive stance right here. Big play for the Knights. Coming in at corners, Travis Vetters for the Wolves. Neo runs the option to the right side. He's got a keeper. He's got room up to the right side. He's mad. He's still on his feet, crossing the 20. He crosses the 15-yard line. And it looks as if he's going to have a first down. Can you believe it? He was met by number 24, Matt Morey, around the 20. But he couldn't wrap and hold. And he was able to escape. And he made it down past the 15-yard line, first down for the Bremerton Knights. What a run by Aubrey Neal. Uh, it looked like uh, uh, we had a player shook up on the play. It was number 33, Dominic Rio, and entering the game for him is number 8, Nick Anderson, who is a sophomore. What a key play by Aubrey Neal, though. Third and long when you're at a field goal position. All of a sudden, it's first and 10 from the 15-yard line about. So that's a key play running that bootleg. Neal hands the ball off to number 21, Anthony Ragsdale, and he is met! He's met by the sophomore number eight, Nick Anderson. What a stick. Way to come into the game and make an impact right, right on your first play. That's, it, that's his first play in a varsity game this year. Wow, way, way to come in and show him what's up. What a hit by Anderson. Nick Anderson is a, like I said, he's a sophomore. He's six foot 168. It'll be second down and 14 for the Knights. Oh, there's gonna be, that's motion. That's motion by the offense. That play won't even get off. Illegal, that should be illegal procedure. Penalties so, are always a killer to a drive like this. And you have a mental mistake like that, jumping, moving before the snap, and that can just kill your drive. Looked like it was number 24, Reggie Williams. So they'll move him back another five yards. And it'll be second down and 19 for the Knights. Coming in for South is number 55, Matt Christenberry. And coming out of the game is number 56, Kenny Gatlin. So again, the Knights have second down and long yardage for that first down. They need to get down to just past the five yard line, almost at the four. Neal fakes the handoff. He looks to pass down the middle. And the pass is incomplete, almost intercepted. Let's see if South can do this. I mean, third, third and long last in the last set of downs, and they gave up the huge run to Aubrey Neal. So let's see if they can hold him this time. We see our first, uh, our first little bit of air attack from Bremerton, and uh, we also see how well, the weather's playing a factor. It looked like it slipped, and the ball was a little wobbly. They faked the dive up the middle, looked to hit the tight end around the 15-yard line, and it was almost intercepted by number 11, Travis Vetter. So again, Bremerton has third down and long. And they've capitalized the last couple of times. A little mix up with the handoff, straight up the middle, and he is met. He's met by number 13, Ryan Garrison, and number 91, Lowell Bosch, the middle linebackers for South Kitsap. Put a little stick to him when he came across the line. Yeah, those are the starting linebackers. They play the position called Mac and Sam, and Scott is a former uh, South player. What do those positions stand for, if not regular linebackers? Uh, the Mac, he stands in the, he stands usually above the center, and uh, he takes care of anything on the inside run, and the Sam usually stands above the tight end or just outside the outside, uh, the left or right tackle and plays a strong side. Well, it's fourth and 18 from the 22 as the Knights are going for it. They fake the handoff. Aubrey Neal with the keeper, and he gets over the right tackle down to about the 18-yard line where the Wolves will take over on downs. So again, another good defensive stop by the South Kitsap Wolves defense. And this will give South a bad field position again, Darren and Kevin. Uh, let's see what they can do. Last time they came out, and... Uh, you know they got stopped, but let's see if they can drive. We have some new players in, number 99, Josh Meeker at tight end, and number 11, Travis Vetters at quarterback. Travis Vetters, the junior, seems just giving Anthony Fine a, you know, a nice break on the sidelines. Travis Vetters is a good quarterback, so I, mean, I don't think we'll be missing anything with Fine out. As Fine hands the ball off to Ryan Cole, he takes it over left tackle and gets it out to about the 22 for a gain of four, it'll be second down and six for the Wolves. Chilton splits right, Mayfield left. 
Cole and Starkweather in the backfield. Fine hands the ball off to Cole, and he's met by number 25, Taba Broplay. What a great defensive stance by the Knights. Broplay made a nice tackle on Cole, as it looked like Cole maybe slipped a little bit on that play. There will be no gain. No gain at all. It'll be third down and six. That's a key tackle there to knock somebody as big as Ryan Cole out like that. Just knock him on his butt. Yep, that was a counter play gone bad. The, the defense, they didn't they didn't bite at all. And they were they were right there ready to meet Ryan Cole. So on third down, Matt Morey comes in at tailback. They hand the ball off to Morey. He goes straight up the middle. But he is met at about the 30-yard line as forward progress would give him. So he gains about three yards on the play, and it's going to be third down and two and a half for the Wolves. Actually, it's it going to be like fourth down. Punt it away. Fourth down, excuse me. So they'll have to punt. Well, after first, after the two first quarter early scores, we're seeing South Kitsap being stopped here twice. Uh, I don't know, the, the Bremerton defense is really stepping up and getting after South. Reggie Williams back to receive for the Knights. Chilton will do the punting. And there's the kick. A great spiral kick by Chilton. Fielded at the 30-yard line, and he's nowhere. He's going to be met by a pack of Wolves, and he gets about another five-yard return where the Knights will take over at the 35-yard line. What a great punt by Josh Chilton. Yeah, that's right, Darren. Um, what a great punt. You, you think that first punt was good and that traveled long distance. That one was even better. It traveled even further. Just, you got to feel sorry for these punt returners. They're at a disadvantage because the linemen are taught to, once the ball is hiked, to, to hold one second and run. So they're up there waiting for that ball, and they're met by about four or five big guys coming full steam. They got nowhere to go besides east and west. There's no there's no north south running with the punt receivers. And it's hard for the punt receivers with the rain looking up to find that ball. That rain's coming down in your eyes. If there's a fumble on the play, and the and the Wolves recover. Another turnover by the Bremerton Knights on the first play of scrimmage when they get the ball and they turn it over on a fumble. Hasn't that been key? Three fumbles by the Bremerton Knights, two of them South has recovered, so now they will take over again. And the Wolves will have good field position. Seems like uh, there's not much complimenting going on with the, with the Bremerton, you know, they fumbled three times, but also South has been stopped twice, and so Nothing's really happening, so let's see what South can do on this drive. Well, the Wolves will have the ball at the 39-yard line after the turnover by Bremerton. Fine gets a three-step a three-step drop, and he was looking for Chilton on the right side on a great pass thrown, but led him just a little too much, incomplete. It'll be second down and 10, South Kitsap. That was a risky throw by number 15, Anthony Fine. He threw into double coverage and was just trying to thread the needle. I think if uh, Josh Chilton had a couple more steps, he might have had it on the dive, but that still was a very risky play in, in times like this. So the Wolves come out throwing with 6-10 remaining in the, in the first half. Cole is the tailback. They hand the ball quickly up the middle to number 45, Shane Starkweather. So they catch Bremerton off guard with the quick dive up the middle. And he gets a real nice gain on the play. And the Wolves are going to have first down and 10 at about the 22-yard line. The Wolves did catch him by surprise. Surprise! The Knights were looking for Ryan Cole to take that ball, but they gave it to Shane Starkweather, and he just capitalized with the first down. Like I said in the beginning of the game, there's number 45, Shane Starkweather. I expected to see big things from him tonight because, you know, he's, he's one of the bigger guys on the team, doesn't have a lot of explosive speed, but, man, he gets that ball. He's rumbling, bumbling, stumbling, and I tell you what, it's, it's going to take a big load to stop him. As Ryan Cole gets the pitch left, he remains on his feet, eludes a couple of tackles, and he gets past the 20-yard line, maybe down to about the 18. So the Wolves are on the move again. After a gain of six yards, it'll be second down and four for the Wolves. Well, again, Ryan Cole, number 34, doing an excellent job keeping his feet going. Even though he might not have much field to go up, he, uh, he's doing a very excellent job in these wet conditions, and he's just trying to get some field position. In these wet conditions, that's all you need is the short runs because the passing game is not going to be that much of a factor because that ball is slippery. Cole get gets the, the pitch gains. from Fine. He gets out to the right side. He'll have well enough for the first down. 
Well, there's something you don't see every day. South Kitsap doing an option play. That looks, uh, they, uh, they look like they're picking some stuff up from Bremerton in this game because uh, that's, that's one of the first options I've seen in years at South Kitsap. You very rarely ever see that. As Mayfield comes off the field, the Wolves will have the ball just inside the 10 yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Wolves. Looks like it's placed at about the nine yard line. Power eye formation with Cole in the backfield. They hand the ball off to Cole at the right side. He's met by the Bremerton Knights. He's not going anywhere. In fact, I think he lost a couple on the play. That is a huge stick by the defensive end for Bremerton. Number 70, Ken Bangert. I mentioned him in the very beginning of the game. He's a senior, 6'4", 220. That's a load meeting a load right there. That's like two Mack trucks meeting on the center of the road on the highway. Bangert has been having a nice game tonight as the Wolves are going to lose a little bit on the play. Looks like they lost about maybe one yard. It's still going to be second down and, and nine, I guess. Second and goal. They hand the ball off to Matt Morey. He takes the ball off the left-hand side. He slips, but he falls just past the five, around the five-yard line, where it'll be third and goal for the Wolves. It looked like Morey would have been able to, to dance right into that end zone, but again, field conditions are a little wet, and he may have slipped, and he went down. Chilton breaks the huddle early, splits right. Looks like the Wolves will have another power for power eye formation, and this time it's Matt Morey as tailback. They hand the ball off to Morey. He gets up the left hand side. Oh, he's close. I thought he got in there, but the umpire is marking him down at about the half yard line. And I would imagine that the Wolves are going to try and punch this one in. We'll see if the Knights can come up with a key stand like the South Kitsap Bulls did last week against Gig Harbor with the, when the Gig Harbor had the, had the ball in the half yard line and the Wolves came up and stopped them on four straight plays. This is going to be gut check time for both teams. This isn't about strength. This isn't about speed. This is all about heart. This is who wants it more, who can punch it in. So Maury comes out. Cole comes in as tailback. The Wolves have a fourth and goal, looking to score again here with 2.32 left in the first half. I would imagine we'd be seeing Ryan Cole with the ball. He gets the ball off the right-hand side, and he's met the touchdown. It looked like he was going to be stopped by the Bremerton defensive line, but Cole ekes his way into the end zone. Touchdown, South Kitsap. Ryan Cole once again moving his feet, getting going, charges into the line of scrimmage with all his with all the you know that big body of his, he gets in there and he just falls forward and gets in for that touchdown. It looks like the Wolves will go for the two-point conversion here. They go with the I formation. Cole stays in a tailback. They fake the handoff to Cole. Fine rolls out to the left. He's got a man open, but it's going to be incomplete. Fine led him a little too much out of the end zone, and it's incomplete to number 25, Tyler Mayfield. So the Wolves miss out on a two-point conversion, but they do score again here before the first half is over. 2.20 left, and the Wolves lead 19 to nothing. Tyler Mayfield tried to stretch with all his might to catch that two-point conversion, but that wall was just out of his reach. Well, a lot of people predicted that tonight's game would be a blowout, but it is far from that. The Bremerton Knights have made an outstanding showing tonight, and they're holding the Wolves in check. Despite the score, you take away those two turnovers by Bremerton, and this is a close football game because each time South Kitsap has been able to take that ball and capitalize by scoring. What's really hurting the Bremerton Knights is their, their offense so far. Their defense is holding those Wolves down. They're, I mean, the Wolves have only made two really successful drives. The other time, they were really close to the end zone. So the, the Knights' defense is holding strong, but the offense needs to pick it up. These two teams are, 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 are a rich rivalry. You go back to, uh, to the early days in the 60s and 70s with East High School and West High School and Bremerton and, and, uh, versus South Kitsap. As Jimmy French with the kick, the ball rolls into the end zone, a touchback. So the Wolves will bring the ball out to the 20 yard line and we'll see what they can do with 2.19 left in the first half. 
Well, Jimmy French, the uh, number 81, you know, the, the recruited soccer player turned football player, that was a great kick. Uh, everybody thought it might have go out of bounds, but it went right in the end zone, and now they're, Bremerton's on their 20. Let's see what they can do. And in many athletic contests, one thing that will just absolutely destroy a team's momentum are turnovers, and that's basically the only thing that's been holding the Bremerton Knights back. As the Knights come out, they pitch the ball off to number 22, Justin Robinette, but he doesn't get very far on the right-hand side as the Wolves' defense swarms him and stops him around the 21-yard line. And on that play, Aubrey Neal took a hard shot from number, number 55, Matt Christianberry. He got a nice shot on the quarterback, and that's always good. You hope to get that quarterback out of there. The clock continues to run here in the first half as the Bremerton Knights will face a second down and nine yardage situation. They come out with three backs in the backfield, one lone receiver as Aubrey Neal rolls out to the left with the keeper and again he has stopped and the Wolves are going to call timeout as the Bremerton Knights have a player down. Who that looks like number 76 for Bremerton. Jason Simmons looks like he's down. Who it looks like he's hurt, Darren and Kevin. I don't know. Let's uh let's see what the trainers are out there looking at him for. So with no gain on the play, it'll be third down and long, nine yards to go. Hey, let me let me use this injury timeout to now to the video reduction students here at South are playing to tape all of the Wolves home games this season. The games will be shown on BKAT channel three or twelve the next day, Saturday at two PM. So come to the games and enjoy it live. Then add the Saturday replay to your football viewing schedule. As we have an injury timeout, number 76, Jason Simmons, a 6'3", 350-pound lineman for Bremerton, is down on the field, so we hope everything is okay. It looks like he's sitting up, and the trainers might be looking at, looks like it might be his right knee. Well, you know, uh, he's an offensive lineman, big guy, one of the biggest guys on Bremerton. Like I said, he's part of that one. Uh, he's one of those uh, those big guys on the Bremerton offensive line, and that's the first thing that that offensive lineman, especially real big guys, have to look at is their knees and ankles. That's a that's the first thing uh, first thing that goes when they get hit. Yeah, because people on the ground roll into knees all the time, and like you said, Darren, that they're looking at that right knee, so that could be a worry of their team. Well, it looks like we thought it was number seventy six. Jason Simmons, but we believe it was 64, Mark Williams. So uh, it looked like it was Williams instead, but he was able to get up and walk off under his own power. So that's a good sign for Bremerton right there. The Wolves are looking to score, or the Wolves are looking to make another defensive stance here. It looks like they're trying to control the clock by using some of their timeouts and hopefully they can stop Bremerton on this third down play. Most likely they'll call a timeout and try to get the ball back and maybe even try and get a score of some kind before the half ends. Well, South Kitsap, uh, they're third and nine here. They, they have good field position defensive-wise, and if, if they can stop Bremerton, they'll, go into, they'll, they'll probably go into the locker room at halftime 19 nothing. But if Bremerton can score, it's going to be a big downer for South Kitsap because it's just going to take them down a notch, and they're going to have to come back out. It's going to be a whole new ball game. Well, with Aubrey Neal behind center, we might look to see the rollout as that has been the main play here for the Bremerton Knights. And they hand off. They fake the handoff. They look the pass down the middle, and it's overthrown incomplete. Nice It'll play by Matt Morey. Nice play by Matt Morey to come in and knock that ball out. The receiver had a chance to catch it, but Morey said, uh-uh, I'm taking that ball. You ain't going to catch it. Well, we have the second try from the Bremerton Knights for a little uh, a little passing attack. And once again, the uh, the climate tonight, the, the rain is playing a factor. The the ball was a little wobbly. It's probably a little slippery out there. There's probably some mud on it. So, you know, let's see if uh, Bremerton get their passing game under control and start throwing the ball down the field. It looked like that pass was intended for number 81, Noah Garjul, a 6'4", 190-pound sophomore for Bremerton. But that was an incomplete pass will bring up a fourth and nine, and the Knights will be punting away to the Wolves, and it looks like it's back to receive is number six, Ryan Sage. And that may be the major difference between the two offense. Uh, both teams are running the ball really well, but it seems that Fine has the better arm, and he's able to complete those, some of those passes, and it seems right now that 
Aubrey Neal has thrown those passes really wobbly. He's not getting a good zip on him, so he's not making the ball catchable for the receivers. An end over end kick. Sage lets the ball bounce and roll a little bit. He picks the ball up. He heads off the right side. Looks like he's going to get a few yards on the game, on the play, and he is going to be close to midfield. Like Darren said, it was number six, Ryan Sage, in the backfield. Uh, he's a senior this year, and this is his first year playing football. But there is a penalty flag on the play. We'll wait for the call by the officials. It looks like they're pointing towards the Bremerton side, but we couldn't really see if there was a holding call or anything. Usually a flag on a punt is an indication of an illegal block in the back or a holding on the receiving team, but we'll have to wait and see what the officials say. Like you said, Scott Ryan Sage is in his first year playing football. Way to come in in his senior year and make an impact as the punt returner. You know, as I sit here and I look at the and I look at the program, fellas, I'm looking at the Bremerton lineup and I'm just looking down the grades here and I see a lot of tens. There's a lot of sophomores on this team. There's a lot of sophomores starting. I look to see big things out of Bremerton in the future. In the next couple years, they're going to have some athletes. And the sophomores are pretty big, so there's also going to be some size. Once they get that experience, it should help the Bremerton Knights. I think that also plays a key factor along with the weather is that South Kitsap is a little more aged. They have a lot, a lot of seniors playing this year. So... Uh, we're going to see a, a, a lot of good a lot of good contests between Bremerton and South in the near future. Well, there was a hold on the South Kitsap Wolves. Like you said, Scott, Bremerton has those young players. Uh, South has some young players coming up too, so they're going to be around for a couple years. Ryan Cole's a junior. Uh, Travis Vetter's the backup quarterback. He's a good quarterback. He's only a junior. Tyler Mayfield's a junior. He's a good receiver too. Also, you got to look at guys that, uh, that also made a tackle tonight. Nick Anderson, number eight. Um, one of the an injured player number number three, Sean Banks, who uh, broke his collarbone in a, in a scrimmage earlier this year. But I'm looking to see huge things from him once he gets uh, once he gets healthy and gets back in the game. Well, this holding play was costly for South Kitsap, as Bremerton will will retain the ball first down and first down to go. Snap fumbled, but that play was blown dead way before the snap. Most likely, that's illegal procedure on the offense. The play previous to that, Bremerton had fourth and long to go. And on the punt, South Kitsap was called for a holding penalty. That brought everything back to give the Bremerton Knights a first down. And that means, Darren, that probably one of the outside guys held the, the, the Knights, one of the outside guys, because that, that holding had to occur before the punt happened for that ball to come back to the Knights. So that dispelled the whole strategy by South Kitsap and the rain is really coming down hard here at Joe Knowles Field. We can look to see this, this field turn into a big mud bowl. The Knights come out in a three-back formation. Anybody who's watched last year knows that the South can perform in the rain. Anybody watching the game last year against Kick Harbor, they won that game in the rain. Looked like Matt Bollinger came back in as quarterback he rolled out right, looked to throw back to his left, had number 15, B.J. Ray, streaking down on a post pattern, but he overthrew him incomplete, and it'll be second down and 10 for the Bremerton Knights. Tonight's going to be a huge chess for both quarterbacks. I think this is the first game of the year, and uh, really around here, CK, Olympic, uh, South, Bremerton, where it's where it's rained. And so I think we're going to see, a, we're gonna see a, a big test from both uh, – the Bremerton and South Kitsap quarterback to see how well they do throwing the ball in, in these wet conditions. The pitch to the to the back, to the right side. And a good stop by Jeff Goodwin. Nice play by Jeff Goodwin. A 5'7", 139-pound junior for the Wolves. And speaking of young players, Jeff Goodwin is a soft or a junior, like you said, Darren. He's stepping up in that wolf position on defense, so he's starting. He should be around next year, too. And he made a nice stop. And uh, actually, his twin brother, Joel Goodwin, is also playing for the South Kitsap Wolves. Those two are hard to tell apart, but I'll tell you, they're just great kids. And their dad, actually, is a teacher at South Kitsap High School who happens to be the head baseball coach, Elton Goodwin, who is just a legend in the baseball world here in the Kitsap County. So when those Goodwin boys aren't getting coaching 
at football practice, I'll bet you they're getting it by their dad. And I'll tell you, he used to coach. Uh, Elton Goodwin used to be a football coach for South Kitsap years ago. So after a timeout, Bremerton comes out, ready to go. Third down and seven. They hand the ball off the inside, and they're met by a pack of wolves. And usually a team with uh, only about 50 seconds left tries to go to the air, but so far, Arby Neal hasn't been able to pass really efficient, so they're sticking to the ground. Looked like number 55, Matt Christenberry, was in on that stop, and it'll be fourth down and five yards to go for Bremerton with 37 seconds to go and ticking. I really got to give credit to both defenses on both sides of the ball. They're really just they're really just hunkering down, playing good, hard-nosed football. They're both getting after one another. No cheap shots. This is just a great defensive football game. To get Neither side is giving each other any slack. Yeah, to give credit to the Bremen Knights. Uh, I, I heard somebody quote that they thought the score could be like 40 to nothing at halftime, but the Bremen Knights have come out and held the South Kitsap Wolves to 19 points, which is a good showing for these Bremen Knights. Well, Bremerton let the clock run all the way down to 11 seconds to take the penalty. They'll move the back, they'll move the ball back another five yards, and they'll just kick it away. And I would imagine that the Wolves, depending on how much time is remaining, will just take the ball, and hopefully that time will run out, and they can go into the locker room with a 19-0 lead over the Bremerton Knights. But still, it's been a good half of football, just as we said earlier, just a couple of turnovers by the Bremerton Knights has been very costly for them as the Wolves have capitalized and scored. So the Wolves break the huddle. They send two men deep, Ryan Sage and number 23, Cody McCauley, as safety men as the Knights get ready to punt. Number two, Larry Kimmons, will be doing the punting for the Knights. And look at that Larry Kimmins. He's out there all the time. He plays both sides of the ball, even punt and kickoff for the Bremen Knights. Oh, he's rushing. He keeps the ball. He's going to get a first down. Kimmins is going. He's going to score. 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Bremerton. Can you believe it? Like I just said, Larry Kimmins, that key player for the Bremen Knights, he stays in there all the time. And look at that. He took that ball right up the middle and took the South Kitsap Bulls by surprise. I don't think that was a, I don't think that was a fake punt. I think that he was rushed and Kimmons was going to have the punt blocked, and he kept it, and he just started running with it. The Wolves weren't ready, and there was nobody that was going to stop him. What a play by Larry Kimmons, a heads-up play that will give the Bremerton Knights a score here, a touchdown off a botched punt with no time left in the first half, as Kimmons will also kick here for the extra point. With that no time left, I'd hate to be in that locker room for South Kitsap going into halftime because you give up a play like that, the coach can't be happy. But the kick is blocked. The kick is blocked by the Wolves, but those South Kitsap coaches can't be happy with that play. They had the Bremerton Knights fourth and long, punting the ball away with 11 seconds before the half, and it looked like that Larry Kimmons couldn't get the punt away or it would have been blocked, and he was able to run the ball in untouched for a touchdown. At least 70 yards, that was a long run. It took, I mean, no, South Kitsap was just stunned by that play. They did not have the time to come back and tackle it. 70 yards is a long run. You should have some time to recover. Not getting that ball back from the punt is almost like a turnover. And again, these turnovers are costly for both sides. So both sides are going to have to look to hang on to that football. As we go into halftime here at Joe Knowles Field, and the South Kitsap Wolves lead the Bremerton Knights 19 to six. What a great half of football. Welcome back to the second half as uh, the South Kitsap Wolves lead the Bremerton Knights 19 to six and uh, we have a few unofficial stats for you here. Uh, running the game, at the running game for the Wolves, we have unofficially Ryan Cole, eight carries, 50 yards, and two touchdowns. We've got Matt Morey with three carries for 48 yards. On the other side of the ball, a big night for, <clears throat> for Kimmins 
for Bremerton with four carries for 95 yards. So Larry Kimmons is having a, a big night, especially on that last play before half. <clears throat> Almost a 60-yarder. Anthony Fine was two for four for 53 yards. And Bremerton did not complete a pass as Jimmy French attempts to kick off, but the whistles blow before he's able to boot it away. <laughs> We're not exactly sure what the call is down there. We'll have to wait and see. Might have been an equipment problem, so the Wolves will try again here. And we're officially underway here in the second half. And it looked as if the ball was going out of bounds, but not. the ball is picked up by Bremerton. And they will have the ball in horrible field position to start the second half. It looked as if the ball was going to be uh, kicked out of bounds, but it stayed in just inside the 10 yard line. Looks like it'll be around the eight as the Bremerton Knights will have horrible field position to start the second half. Speaking of horrible horrible field position, that was a horrible decision by number 24, Reggie Williams. That ball goes out of bounds, you get the ball back at the 35 instead of way down in their own territory. I expect big things out of the second half from both teams. I think we saw an example of the explosiveness of Bremerton and how they can just come out of nowhere and have a 70-yard run for a touchdown. But I also expect huge things out of South, who, as we know, has tools in every aspect and every, every, every position out in the field and can at any time just, just come in with a huge play and score a touchdown or make a big block. And on the first play of scrimmage, Bremerton's Aubrey Neal keeps the ball, tries to run over right guard, but he doesn't get very far. A couple yards on the game. Looks like it's going to be about second down and eight yards to go for Bremerton. So, again... After the kickoff by the Wolves, Bremerton has poor field position at about the 10-yard line. They hand the ball straight up the middle to Larry Kimmons. He almost breaks free. Luckily, number 24, Matt Morey with the stop. Could have been a, a touchdown-saving tackle there by Matt Morey. We now have entering the game number 45, Shane Starkweather, they're coming in for number 13, Ryan Garrison. Starkweather, who uh, in the beginning of the game had a good uh, good run at fullback, and uh, let's see what he can do at middle linebacker with uh, number 91, Lowell Bosch at Sam. So about a nine-yard gain, and the Knights get down to the 19-yard line where they'll have first and 10. Neal with the handoff to the inside. <coughs> Great stop by Jeff Rio there. Big guy like that, he clogs up the middle pretty good on runs. Looked like it was number 22, Justin Robinette. 5'7", 165-pound sophomore, but he doesn't get very far. Looks like about a, a yard on the gain. It'll be second down and nine for Bremerton. So Bremerton slowly on the move here early in the, in the second half. They're at their own 20. Neal under center. He rolls out to the left. Fakes the pitch, keeps the ball, stays on his feet. And he is taken down at about the 26. Looks like it'll be second down, third down here. Even though South has a proud uh, football tradition, here it's, it isn't always about football. I mean, last night there was a huge school event like Open House, and uh, Darren, you were a teacher. The parents came. Was it a good event? I mean... Oh, it worked out to be real nice. We had a nice showing of parents, and uh, I think everybody was able to show up and have a really good time, get to know the building a little bit, uh, meet their sons and their daughters' teachers. As uh, Neil hands the ball off to the left-hand side, and they're going nowhere. I don't think he got a first down. Looked like the ball was handed off to Kimmins. That was number 24, Reggie Williams, on the carry. And the Knights are, will be stopped short here. It'll be fourth down and one. And it'll be a punting situation as Kimmins comes on to do the punting. Kevin, you made a comment earlier about uh, number 79, Jeff Rio, who made this stop uh, earlier in this defensive, uh, this defensive outing. He, uh, he holds the all-time bench record here at South Kitsap and also one of the strongest men to ever walk the halls of South Kitsap. He's well over 1,200 plus, which that means that he lifted a total of over 1,200 pounds on the bench, cleans, and squats. Well, Ryan Sage fielded the punt, 
at the 42-yard line, gained 11 on the play, and he takes the ball across midfield to about the 47-yard line where the Wolves will have first and 10. So good field position early for the Wolves, and that might be the theme here for both sides. As the Wolves come out in an I formation, Cole is the tailback. Mayfield and Chilton are the receivers. They hand the ball off to Cole. He gets out to the left, but he is met by three Bremerton Knight defensive players, and Cole goes nowhere. In fact, no gain on the play. Nice defense there by the Knights. It'll be second down and 10 to go for South Kitsap. Good group tackle there. The, the tackle is made by Anthony Ragsdale, Tiba Profa, uh, Justin Kelly, and Tiba Profe. Fine under center, takes a three-step drop, throws out to the flat to Mayfield, but he loses his footing and slips and falls, and the pass is incomplete. It looks like to me these Bremerton Knights have come out with a little, with a little more excitement after that 70-yard run by Larry Kimmons in um, the end of the first half. Uh, South Kitsap's going to have to step it up a little bit here and start driving the ball. We've had a lot of fumbles tonight and a lot of loose footing causing players to slip. So this weather is having an effect on the players. On third and ten, the Wolves will go from the shotgun. <coughs> Fine takes a snap. He's looking down. He's got Chilton, but he throws. Chilton turned to the inside and Fine threw to the outside. Incomplete. It'll be fourth and ten for the Wolves. That was just a case of miscommunication between Josh Chilton and Anthony Fine. Chilton ran about 12 yards, two yards past the first down yard marker. He turned to the inside. Fine thought he was going the other way, and it's an incomplete pass. So the Wolves will have to punt it away. Number 24, Reggie Williams, back to receive the punt for the Knights. Chilton will do the punting. As the rain continues to fall. Chilton, oh, another nice punt by Chilton. Field a fumble! It's going to be recovered by the Wolves! Did he get into the end zone? Yes, he did. He did! It's a touchdown! What a key play by that South Kitsap punt coverage. They were down there right when that ball hit the ground. Williams tried to field the, the punt. He fumbled it. Now, wait a minute. They might not be signaling a touchdown here. Wait a minute. We'll have to see what they're calling. Williams tried to field the punt. The ball, he fumbled. The ball was heading into the end zone. One of the South Kitsap football players tried to jump on it and it looked as if he may have been down before he went into the end zone but either way South Kitsap will have great field position touchdown or not this is a huge confidence builder for South Kitsap after getting stopped on their first outing in offense on the, in the first part of the second half to me it seemed like he got that pylon but one of one of the referees said he was in the other just said he wasn't so they got together and decided he wasn't in and again turnovers have hurt the Bremerton Knights. That's their third turnover of the game. And it gives South Kitsap possession at about the one yard line. So the Wolves will be knocking on the Knights door again here early in the second half of play with the Wolves leading 19-6 with 7.49 left in the first half. With the rain going like this, uh, guys, you really have to feel for those cheerleaders out there in those little skirts. But, you know, football have all those pads. They're just out there dancing around. But they that look cold in those little skirts. So after their first series, the Bremerton Knights punted the ball away to South Kitsap. They went three plays and had to punt with a great defensive stance by the Bremerton Knights. And on the punt, Reggie Williams fumbled Fumbled the catch, and the Wolves recover at the one-yard line. The Wolves come out in an I formation. Cole is the tailback. They hand the ball off to Cole. He goes up left, and he's in for a touchdown. Touchdown, South Kitsap. That was a huge hole made by 
the left side of that line by South Kitsap. Once again, the big offensive line anchored over there by Jeff Rio. Makes a huge hole that you could drive a Mack truck through, and there goes Ryan Cole right in for the touchdown. On their first two touchdowns, it was legwork by those running backs. By that time, it was the lineman. You could have drove a Mack truck through that hole. What a momentum stopper by the South Kitsap Wolves against Bremerton. So the Wolves get on the board here again as they are going for the two-point conversion. Fine keeps the ball, rolls right, he's chased out of the pocket. He tries to throw it into the end zone. He's snuffed out and it's incomplete. So again, they fail to complete the two point conversion. And now the score is 25 to six, South Kitsap. The one thing that has hurt the South Kitsap Wolves the first few games of the season has been extra points. I'm a little surprised we haven't seen more of Jimmy French, but uh, the Wolves have been trying to go for a couple of two-point conversions, and uh, they have failed at those attempts. So uh, this game is by no means over, even though the Wolves get the touchdown here after the Bremerton turnover. Well, Darren, I figure, you know, uh, Jimmy French, he's, he's, new to this, he's new to the game and everything, and uh, they're probably just still breaking him in and stuff. He's out there. He's kicked. Uh, I think this is his... I think this is his fourth kickoff. I'm sure they're just, uh, you know, they're just trying him out at different spots, kicking the ball, and uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing him on the PATs here in the near future. Well, I think they went for two on that play because right now the lead's 19. If they had two on that play, it'd been 21. That would've been three touchdown lead instead of the three touchdowns beating them now. Well, that time on the kickoff, Jimmy French pulls the ball left. This time it does go out of bounds as the Bremerton Knights will not fool around by touching that one. Penalty on the flag, so the ball will come out to the 35-yard line where the Bremerton Knights will take over first and 10. So just to recap here, halfway through the, second, the third quarter, here in the second half, after a South Kitsap punt, Bremerton fumbled at the one-yard line. The Wolves recover and score. So the Knights come out with three backs. Aubrey Neal with the keeper rolls to the right. But he doesn't get very far. Only a gain of a couple. Looks like a gain of about three. It'll be second down and seven for the Bremerton Knights. Entering the game now is number 69, Ben Duncan, a defensive lineman in for number 75, Chris Kruger who uh, is just, just now coming off an injury. He was uh, out last game uh, uh, against Gay Harbor, uh, but obviously he's well again and he's off plan. Neal rolls to the left, looking for the option. He keeps the ball and he is met. What a hit. He's stuck by number 91, Lowell Bosch. Neal looked to pitch the ball, kept Tried to turn up field, but was met by number 91, Lowell Bosch. That was a great team effort. Lowell Bosch stood him up, hit him hard, and then, and then number 56, Kenny Gatling, came around and just knocked him out for the final punch. That'll be a loss of three on the play, and it'll be third down, third down and 10, Bremerton. The rain continuing to fall here at Joel Knowles Field. They hand the ball off to number 22, Justin Robinette. He gets out to the right side, crosses midfield. He gets all the way down to the 38-yard line. Can you believe it? Again, the Bremerton Knights looked like they were going to be held on third and long, and they get another big play by number 22, Justin Robinette. And what sprang him was a key block by number 81, Noah Garjul. Uh, he, he sprung him, and he, that's what that key play was from, is the key block like that. That's, that can make all the difference in a run like that. We have to give some credit to number 24, Matt Morey, for having the proper uh, pursuit angle and getting after number 22, the running back. They hand the ball off to Robinette again, up the right side. Probably looks like a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven for the Knights. And on that, two plays ago with that wide receiver making that block, it's always what you look for in a wide receiver, that he's a good, he's a good blocker. So when, when they run those end arounds and, and outside runs, they can block those cornerbacks and for you can make the gains. We've seen it several times this evening. 
where the Bremerton Knights had second or third, third down and long, and they get big yards on the play to stay in this contest. They give the ball up to Robinette. He is met on the left side by number 88, A.J. Edwards, and number 7, Jeff Goodwin. Another great defensive stop. It'll be third down and five yards to go for Bremerton. So we'll see what Bremerton can do here on the third down situation. They've been fairly successful this evening. And see, like, on the difference between that and the play earlier was there was no wide receiver out there blocking A.J. Edwards, so he was able to stay, step up and make that tackle. Neal looks, fakes the handoff up the middle, keeps the ball, heads to his left, but he's not going anywhere. He just had no room to run, and South Kitsap stopped him. Looks like about the 31-yard 30, line. Uh, they'll mark it at the 30, and it'll be fourth down and two yards to go for Bremerton. So a key play here for both sides. Aubrey Neal was met by everybody on the South Kitsap defense, I think, besides the two corners and the safety. That was a great gang tackling job by the South Kitsap defense. Last week after that Gig Harbor game, I read a great article in the Sun about the SK Wolves, and it defined the defense perfectly. They're a bunch of small people, but they swarm and tackle you and gang tackle you, and they don't let you get, make those big plays. The Knights have to hurry up. They don't want to get a penalty here for taking too much time. Neal fakes the hand up. They throw the ball in the middle. The pass is intended for number 81, Noah Garjul. The pass is incomplete. Garjul looked like he turned to the inside. Aubrey Neal passed the ball. Looks like it went to the outside. So a miscommunication there from the quarterback to the tight end. And the South Kitsap Wolves will take over on downs. Incomplete. Tonight in this game, there's only been one complete pass that I saw, and that was in the first quarter to Josh Chilton of the, of the Wolves. So, as you can tell, they, they should be abandoning, abandoning the passing game and keep on running. The Wolves will have the ball first and 10 at the 30-yard line. They, they pitch the ball to Cole. Cole gets to the outside. He escapes a tackle. And he gets out to about the 47-yard line. Kevin, you made the comment earlier that uh, you read the article in the paper about South being a being a small defense, but very good. You know, I'll have to agree with you uh, about that, but uh, they might not be the biggest defense in the world, but, man, they're scrappy. And I, I just see a lot of, you know, there, there might not be a lot of huge hits out there tonight, but but there's just there's this good, hard nose uh, de defensive play going on by both sides. It's a lot of heart, a lot of guys that just want to get to the ball. Hustling, <laughs> that's, that's the key. Let's back that up about five yards to the 42. A gain of 12. Fine takes a three-step drop. He's got, he's got Tyler Mayfield catch. What, what a, a great catch. What a great catch. He kept his eye on the ball, was able to put on the brakes and jump and make that catch. Number 25, Tyler Mayfield, who is a junior. This is also his very first year of playing football, and he's now starting for South Kitsap, which is a great feat because South Kitsap's a, uh, a 4A school and is the largest largest uh, high school in the state of Washington. That's a, that's, that's a huge accomplishment for Tyler Mayfield. Fine fake the handoff up the middle on the dive. Mayfield was streaking up the left side. And it looked like Vine may have thrown it just a little bit to his left, but Mayfield made a nice adjustment for the catch. It'll be first and 10 Wolves at about the 30-yard line. As they pitch the ball out to Dominic Rio, number 33, gets out to the right side. Looks like he's going to gain about five yards on the play. So Dominic Rio in at tailback. Dominic Rio last year was back, back up to uh, SK legend Roger Cooper. And this year in uh, training camp, he was beaten out by uh, Ryan Cole, so he's uh, re re uh, reserved for the backup role again this year. Dominic Grillo, he's uh, not only second string on uh, for running back, but he is the starting wolf for the for the the scrappy South Kitsap defense. Give Dominic Rio three yards on the carry; it'll be second down and seven for the Wolves. Fine with a little one-step drop. He's looking for Mayfield on the right side, or excuse me, that's Chilton, and that'll be incomplete. It'll be third down and seven for the Wolves. Fine looking for Josh Chilton, streaking down the right side, but the pass was overthrown. It'll be third down for the Wolves. We still have slippery conditions here on the field, but uh, the rain has let up somewhat. As the Wolves break the huddle in the I formation. Mayfield split left, Chilton right. This could be a passing situation. 
They pitch the ball out to Cole on the left side. He's got a lot of blockers. He gets out to the left. He crosses the 20, but he's not going to make the first down. It's going to be a few yards short. I actually feel for players like Ryan Cole and Anthony Fine because they uh, – like I've said a couple times, the SK legends like Jimmy Newell and Roger Cooper, they moved on to the next level of college ball, and so they had to fill in for these great players and make impacts like they did. But he had some nifty running there by Ryan Cole, and he did pick up the first down. The ball will be spotted at about the 19-yard line for the Wolves, and they are driving. They hand the ball off to Cole. He gets, oh, what a big hole. There goes Cole. He's going to dance into the end zone. Touchdown, South Kitsap. And you can credit that touchdown to Josh Chilton, number 31, out there on that wide receiver. Like I said before, wide receiver blocking is key to those runs out to the outside. That big offensive line for South Kitsap really came through on that right side. Uh, I believe it was Chris Kruger playing the right tackle, made a hole you could drive a truck through again. And uh, number 34, Ryan Cole, saw it, took the chance, skated into the end zone. When Cole got the ball, he had a huge hole on the right side of that offensive line. And there was no way that Bremerton was going to catch him. Ryan Cole is one great runner. As Jimmy French comes out to do the point after touchdown, there's the snap, the kick is up, and it is good. So the South Kitsap Wolves convert their PAT, and the score is now 32 to six. South Kitsap over Bremerton with 2.16 remaining here in the third quarter. That was, a nice, that was a nice series of offensive plays there by the South Kitsap Wolves to take that ball into the end zone and some nifty running by Ryan Cole. Really, you have to give credit to these SK fans. They stuck it through this hard weather and rain seems to be letting up now, and so, but they stuck it through and they're out here supporting their team. Well, we have a lot of South Kitsap fans out here and we have to mention a few of these uh, a few of these students who have braved the weather to come out here dressed in maroon and gold. We got to talk about one senior, a gentleman I've had in class and couldn't putt to save his life. And that's Joel Foreman. What a great kid out here supporting his South Kitsap Wolves as the Wolves kick off to the Bremerton Knights. And they get the ball down to about the 26-yard line where they will take over first and 10. We have to credit the South Kitsap cheerleaders for doing a nice job with the push-ups here after every touchdown that is scored. Speaking of Joel Foreman, uh, homecoming court nominations just came out, and Joel Foreman was one of the people nominated for the male side of the homecoming court. So were SK football players like Jimmy French, Dominic Rio, Ryan Sage. And Joel just represents many South Kitsap athletes uh, who have a lot of spirit and other fans who are here to root on their team as the ball is handed off to number 21 Anthony Ragsdale he heads up the right side for a small gain a big gain there by Ragsdale of eight yards. It'll be second down and two yards to go for Bremerton. The rain has subsided here, but the conditions are still slippery as the Bremerton Knights have a three back set. They hand the ball off the right side to number 22, Justin Robinette, but he's tripped up by number 55, Matt Christenberry. Well, fellas, I'm looking down here on the sidelines, and uh, after this last score, that you know, the score is now 32-6, uh, to six, I see a little, uh, a little warming up going down here on the sidelines. Uh, number 17, Jared Stevenson, a sophomore. Uh, it looks like he's warming up. He's thrown to some receivers. We may see a little, uh, he may see a little action in his, his first varsity game tonight. Practically no gain on the play. It looks like there's a fumble on the play. Looked like Neal mishandled the snap and almost as if he was upended by one of his own players but Bremerton will retain control as we have a as 
Aubrey Neal is slow to get up, but he looks like he's going to be okay, and it'll be fourth down and two yards for Bramerton, and they will surely punt this ball away. Like Scott, you just mentioned Jared Stevenson. He's a sophomore. There's even some younger players in this SK football program. Because of the levy, uh, levy failure, uh, all junior high sports have been cut, so a lot of ninth graders have been coming up for this SK football program, and they're, they're playing in, for this SK team. Ryan Sage and Cody McCulley back to receive the punt for the Wolves. The kick is up, and it's a line drive spiral. The Wolves are going to let it. McCauley picks the ball up. He's going to head straight at the middle. He's got a lot of running room to the left. He's at midfield. Kimmins is going to catch him, though. That, that, was, number, that was number 23, Cody McCauley, who is a sophomore. Uh, he's 6'2", 172. I expect to see huge things from that kid in the future. He's also uh, got some varsity time as wide receiver this year, too. There was a line drive punt. And it looked as if McCauley was going to let it go, but he picked it up at the last minute, headed right and cut back to the left. And he had one man to beat, and that was Larry Kimmins, but there's going to be no beating Larry Kimmins. Actually, uh, I, it looked like Ryan Sage went to field it, but he lost it in the air, and so it started bouncing, and McCauley just uh, covered Sage's back there, ran back, got it, and made the nice gain. Fine rolls out to the right. The pass is low and intended for number nine, Brendan Mueller. Incomplete, it'll be second down and 10 for the Wolves. Looks like we got some new players in for South Kitsap. Number 99, Josh Meeker's playing tight end. Number 44, Victor Valle's in at running back. Number 11, Travis Vetter's now in at quarterback. And also number nine, Brennan Mueller, a sophomore, is playing a wide receiver. And it looks like Gary Snyder's coming for Josh Chilton also, Scott. So the Wolves are making several substitutions here as uh, we have to credit that incomplete pass to Travis Vetter's. They hand the ball off, uh, up to left side, number 44, Victor Valle, with a nice gain there. He's tripped up. And boy, have we seen uh, input from these young players, like Victor Valle, he's also a sophomore, and these players are just making the key input to this game. Gained about four yards on the play. It'll be third down and six yards to go. As we come to the end of the third quarter, and as they change sides on the field, the South Kitsap Wolves lead the Bremerton Knights 32 to six. If you'd like to get the opportunity to get an inside look at the schools of the schools of the South Kitsap School District, then consider signing up to take the Back to the Future bus tour. Every month, Superintendent Bill Lamont leads a tour through our schools. And he even throws in a free lunch. If you'd like some more information, please contact the district office at 895-3959. We'd love to have you drop by and see us. The phone number again is 895-3959. Well, the Bremerton Knights had difficulty moving the football there in the third quarter, unable to score. The South Kitsap Wolves controlled the ball pretty much to their, to their liking and they're able to gain a more comfortable lead over Bremerton heading into the fourth quarter. And I would imagine we're starting, we're going to see a few more substitutions here in the fourth quarter. Actually a great part of coming to this game is also hearing that band play. They play some great music like the SK song and they even play the national anthem before the game. I mentioned earlier that number 44, Victor Valle is in the backfield. He's playing running back right now. He, uh, where Ryan Cole is big and powerful and can run through guys. Victor Valle, a sophomore who came from Cedar Heights Junior High. He's the type of guy that can that can go one way and then cut back the other way real fast and, and you don't even see him. He's a great running back and I expect to see huge things out of that kid in the future. And Vetter's handed the ball to Victor Valle heading up the left side for only gain of about a yard. It'll be fourth down and four yards to go and the Wolves will go for it. And with the lead like 32 to 6, you can afford to make this kind of daring play. You know, Kevin, you mentioned earlier about how the, the band is doing a great job, and we've mentioned about the, the, um, all the kids supporting coming out here in their, in their school spirit and the cheerleaders and everything. Also, all the people that, uh, that you don't see, like uh, you know the paramedics that are standing along the track, also acting ensemble and uh, highlighters have also uh, supported 
are supporting the football team by doing uh, uh, football concessions and just, you know, the whole school seems to come together and just really support, come out and uh, try to support South Kids at football. As they we see about a six-yard gain there by Victor Valle up the left-hand side, and the Wolves will get a first down. They'll have the ball at about the 29-yard line as they're moving towards our end of the end zone from our left to the right. And uh, speaking of volunteer work, you know, coming out supporting this team, there's a lot of teachers and coaches who come give up. Uh, give all their time to come up here and you know, help produce films and take stats for this SK football squad. Number nine, Brendan Mueller with the carry there with a gain of only about two yards. It'll be second down and eight yards to go for the Wolves. As more substitutions come into the game, number five, Gary Snyder, and number 41, Brent Carson. Wolves will have a second and eight. Snyder split left. Tyler Mayfield to the right. Oh, that's they hand the ball off to number 44, Victor Valle, but that play was dead before it began as a penalty flag will have illegal procedure against the offense, so they'll back the Wolves up five yards. And really, Darren, we haven't seen that many key penalties this game. I, I, I know I saw one false start on Bremerton in the first half, but I don't really remember that many key uh, key penalties. Haven't been a whole lot of penalty, penalties tonight. There sure have been turnovers, and that's been the difference in this contest tonight as the Bremerton Knights have turned the ball over three times to the South Kitsap Wolves, zero turnovers. Travis Vedders, under center, there's, he fumbles the snap, picks it up. He's rolling out to the left. But he's not going to get anywhere as Bremerton snuffs him out. Larry, Larry Kimmon just wrapped him up by the neck and would not let him go until the refs blew that whistle. He's going to lose a few more yards on the play. It's going to be about third down and 14 yards to go for the Wolves. This game hasn't been pretty, but as so far SK has been doing the job with this lead and with only 9.45 left in the game. They, but it's, it hasn't been pretty like we've said many times. Well, it sure looked like Bremerton had the momentum going into halftime, but as soon as they scored a touchdown, they came out, they turned the ball over as well. As Victor Valle gets the handoff straight up the middle, and he gets to about the 30-yard line for a gain of about four yards. It'll be fourth down and 11 for the Wolves. I would imagine they'll be going for it here again, trying to run off a little more time off that clock. Oh, we see a lot of substitutions coming uh, off and on of the South Kids at bench. Uh, number 41, Brent Carson is now coming in for number nine, Brandon Mueller. As more substitutions come into the game for the South Kitsap Bulls. What's great about a game like this, where the you know the margin of the margin of between the scores is kind of high is you can get those players that give all their time at practice but don't get much playing time in the game. They get playing time in that game and they come in. The Wolves were looking to run the option play. Vetters rolled out to the right, pitched the ball to Victor Valle. The ball was fumbled. Valle picked it up, was able to gain a few yards on the play, but it was busted from the beginning. And the Bremerton Knights will take over on downs. They'll have the ball at about the 30-yard line, at the 29-yard line. As the rain is starting to pick up a little more here, uh, now we're seeing substitutions on the defense. Number 21, Joel Goodwin is coming in for number seven, Jeff Goodwin. And number eight, Nick Anderson is coming in for number 33, Dominic Rio at the wolf position. Kimmins goes in motion to the right. Ball is kept by number five, Joe Bollinger, the 6'1", 195-pound junior. He keeps it, turns it upfield. But standing right there was number 13, Ryan Garrison, who didn't let him get out of his grasp. He gets to the 32-yard line. It'll be second down and seven for Bremerton. Coming in now is number 41, Brent Carson at Sam back. As Bremerton takes its time coming out of the huddle, in fact, they're going to call a timeout. So with 7.47 remaining in the game, the South Kitsap Wolves lead the Bremerton Knights 32 to 6. 
Here's an early warning about school schedules you should keep in mind. Thursday, October 12th is an early release day, so the kids will be getting out, getting home early. And then Friday, October 13th, there is no school due to the statewide teaching, teacher training day. Friday the 13th, that's going to be cool. <laughs> to summarize a little bit what's going on here in the second half, there really haven't been a lot of key plays, just a couple of big plays. Everything else has been pretty even. Not a very good contest, as both sides have been a little sloppy holding on to the ball, but uh, the Wolves maintain a nice 26-point cushion as both sides come out from the timeout, and the Wolves will have a second down and seven from the 32. Coming in at defensive end for number 19, R.J. Lang, is number 72, Dan Garrison, brother of middle linebacker and fullback number 13, Ryan Garrison. So Joe Bollinger has taken over at quarterback for Aubrey Neal. Seems to be a little confusion on the field. Maybe a, an equipment problem, broken mouthpiece, problem taken care of. Here we go. Looks like they've got it all straightened out as we resume play. They hand the ball off to number 22, Justin Robinette. He gets out to the right side. He's near a first down. He probably got about six yards on that play, and it'll be third down and short for the Knights. He's tackled by number 24, Matt Morey, the corner on that side. You gotta give credit to the players who are injured right now and can't suit up. They come out here and show their support. Uh, you mentioned Sean Banks earlier. He's the junior class president, and because of that broken collarbone, uh, I know he has to run laps all practice instead of actually practicing. So that you know that's kind of bad that you have to run laps all practice. As number 35, Sam Rogers comes in for the Wolves on defense. Bollinger hands the ball straight up the middle. Looks like it was Larry Kimmons. No, that's not Kimmons. Get a number here. Number 25, Taba Broplay. He takes the ball straight up the middle, and they will have a first down, and he gets to the 45-yard line. So the Knights break the huddle, trying to hurry the offense up a little bit here. Bollinger runs into his, and he's knocked down by his own man. Tried to pitch before he was knocked down, but the officials marked him down before he pitched, and it'll be second down for the Knights. It seemed as though to, uh, number 25 for the Knights cut it in too quick, and the quarterback wasn't ready for it, and he ran right into his fullback, who was heading out to lead the block. He tried to run the option play down the left side of the line, but Bollinger was knocked down by one of his own linemen. But the Knights retain possession, and it'll be second down and 10 yards to go for Bremerton. Ball is handed off with the right side to number two, Larry Kimmons. He doesn't get very far. He gains about one yard on the play. It'll be third down and nine for Bremerton. And the rain is picked up again here in Port Orchard. You got to hand it to both uh, the, uh, both offense and defense, the, uh, the Knights and the Wolves. The Knights are, uh, are down 32-6, to six and they're still fighting hard. They're still trying to get down the field. And also the Wolves, they got a lot of young players in right now, a lot of guys that haven't seen hardly any varsity time. They're, they're fighting tooth and nail also to, to move up on the tag board. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a brawl out there right now. You know, they're, they're scrappy, and uh, it's great football. As Justin Robinette took the handoff and went about seven yards close to the first down, Looks like they're going to measure here. He bounced off a few tackles and is real close to that first down yard marker. They'll bring out the chains. And he does, he has a first down. So the Knights have a first down at the 45 yard line. Time ticking away here with 5.20 left in the game. South Kitsap still on top, 32 to six, as the Knights hurry out of the huddle. Bollinger takes the snap, hands the ball back to Robinette, but he's not getting anywhere. They've tried that counterplay a couple of times, 
but the Wolves defense stops it before it gets anywhere. He's stopped by number nine, a sophomore, Brennan Mueller, uh, of the linebacker, 5'8", 161. It'll be second down and nine yards to go for Bremerton. Bollinger takes a snap, fakes the handoff right, rolls out to the left. He escapes a, a, the tackle. He throws down. Looked like to number number 15, B.J. Ray, but an incomplete pass. That pass looked like it was almost right in his hands. All he had to do was reel that in, but it went right through it. And, and uh, so that's a key play, you know. That was a nice throw by the quarterback, and if he caught that, they were all the way down and close to the touchdown. He ran the old bootleg out to the left, had Ray down streaking down the left side, but the pass was incomplete, and it'll be third down and nine for the Knights. Bollinger drops back, looks for the slant in the middle, and it will be incomplete. You know, you got to hand it to these Bremerton Knights. They keep trying to pass the ball, and, and you know, they just haven't been able to get anything going with their with their passing attack. They've relied solely on their running game, and they've they've been actually been able to stay in the game. But, uh, you know, uh, this this weather tonight and everything, and you really just got to give them credit for, for going strictly to their running game. That pass was intended for number 32, Taylor M. Poland-Smith, a 5'11", 145-pound junior, as Bremerton will go for it here on fourth down. Looks like another passing situation. Bollinger drops back. He looks for 15, B.J. Ray, down the left, in and out of the hands of, of B.J. Ray, incomplete, and the Wolves will take over on downs. That's a great knockdown by number 88, A.J. Edwards. That's great defense. That's just the way that how they're taught how to do it. That's perfect execution. So Bollinger again looks for B.J. Ray down the left side of the field, but the pass is incomplete, and the Wolves will turn around and have the ball first and 10 from the 45-yard line. There's just nothing in the passing game for both these teams. Who we have a new quarterback in, sophomore number 17, Jared Stevenson and number 44 at running back is Victor Valle. Let's see what these guys can do. They hand the ball off to Valle. He goes straight up the middle for a very short gain. It'll be second down for South Kitsap as more substitutions are coming in now. Coming in, in the, just coming in the game is number 93, Chris Anderson, a ninth grader uh, who is a running back. He's 5'8", 177. This has got to be a big eye-opening experience for this ninth grader coming into a 4A football game at fullback. As you can see, there, that's what is good about these games where, where the SK's up by a bunch. Uh, they can put these young players in, give them some game time, and with these ninth graders coming up, they have, a, they have really no experience. And since the, J, since the junior high program's been cut, this is their only experience they can get. As Valle has the carry, he gains a couple more. It'll be third down and five yards to go for South Kitsap. As number 12, Dusty Starkweather, a 5'9", 155-pound sophomore, comes into the game. Sage, split wide receiver to the right. Just like you said earlier, Kevin, there's there's uh, three ninth graders in the uh, that suited up for South tonight. Number 97, Victor Rybachuk. Number 95, Brent Nickerson and number 93, Chris Anderson. As Stevenson dropped back, had a three-step drop, and he hit Ryan Sage streaking across the middle on a post, on a slant, and they gain almost 20 yards on the play down to the Bremerton 35-yard line. First and 10 for the Wolves. That was a nice pass by Stevenson, but a, a nice catch by Sage too. He had people on his back, and he went up in traffic and caught that ball. So it looked like the pass was deflected, but a nice pass or and a nice catch by Sage as they pitch the ball out to number 12, Dusty Starkweather. He tries to break out on the right side, but he goes nowhere, and he is taken down at the 34-yard line. Entering the game now is number 95, 
Brent Nickerson, another ninth grader. He's entering in for number 12, Dusty Starkweather. You mentioned uh, Goodwin brothers earlier. Uh, both, there's also Starkweather brothers on this team. They're, one's a 10th one's a grader, the other one's a 12th grader. He's going to graduate later this year. Second down and nine for the Wolves at the 35. Stevenson hands the ball straight up the middle, but he's going nowhere. Some hard hitting going on by that Bremerton defensive line. What a stick by Tiebo Bro play. Number 95, Brent Nickerson, in his first varsity play, is met by number Tiebo Bro play, who is a senior and got his first stick in a varsity football game. Practically no gain on the play. It'll be third and nine from the 34 yard line. Wolves in an I formation. They end the ball straight up the middle. Stevenson. That was Brent Carson on the carry there. Nice gain. Handing off to Carson. Gains a few yards. It'll be fourth down and three yards to go for South Kitsap. And they will go for it here. Stevenson trying to hurry up the offense. As there's less than a minute remaining in the game. Number 84, Nate Wittig split to the right. Power eye formation. Oh, and he is met! Oh, what a hit! That was another great tackle. They, there's been two crushing drives by T. Aber play, and he just crushed that running back. And he's betting over. He got he's a little dazed from that tackle too. By number looked like it was number 92, Justin Kelly, a 6'3, 230-pound lineman. Oh, was he met at the line? I could hear that hit all the way up here. As Bremerton takes over on downs. Bollinger rolls out to his right. He looks back at B.J. Ray on a slant over the middle, but the pass is incomplete. That's the second knockdown by number 88, A.J. Edwards, who is just executing excellently at the corner position, doing exactly what he's taught. So their go-to guys, number 15, B.J. Ray, but that secondary for the Wolves has been tough to beat. They've been striking down those passes all night long. And with 35 seconds to go in the game, this one looks like it'll go in the record books as Bollinger rolls out to the left. Looked like he was going to keep it, decides to pass. The pass is complete to number 15, B.J. Ray. Stop made by number 84, Nate Wittig. <laughs> Looks like we have a timeout on the play. And I got one more announcement for you guys. Uh, get involved with your South Kitsap School District. One way to do it is to attend our school board meetings. They are held on the first and third Mondays of every month. Meetings start at 7 p.m. The public is invited, and in fact, our schools desperately need the input and support of all community members. So attend the school board meetings and find out what's going on in your community schools. Well, the Wolves gained all the momentum coming into the second half. It hasn't been a pretty game, but they've been able to control most of what has happened in the second half and maintained a big lead. And the Wolves will come away with a win here this evening. As Bollinger drops straight back, pump fakes. He's looking for B.J. Ray again, streaking down the sideline, and the pass is incomplete. And it'll be fourth down for Bremerton with 15 seconds remaining in the contest. Well, we see Bremerton now uh, down 32-6. to six. They're really going to their passing game now. Uh, yeah, you never know what would have happened if they would have went to that earlier, if, uh, if the game would have been changed, because they, they depend strictly on their running game for the first three quarters of football. Bollinger drops back, slips on the play, Pass is incomplete, and Bollinger looks like he might be a little shaken up, but he's okay. He bounces right back up. He planted, tried to throw the ball as he was slipping, 
And there are nine seconds remaining in the game. And that was even another set of brothers. Uh, we mentioned A.J. Edwards a couple times. There was Landon Edwards who could have the interception on that, if, but he was looking the other way. The Wolves will take over on downs. We'll have time for one more play. They might take a knee here. And if not, I'm sure it'll just be one more running play. Stevenson comes out under center. And he will, he'll just take a knee. Two, one, zero, there we go. That's the end of the game, folks. As the South Kitsap Wolves have defeated the Bremerton Knights. We want to thank you for joining us tonight for this game here at South Kitsap High School. We'd like to thank the students of the video production crew here at South Kitsap who have made this program possible. And we'd like to have a big thanks to the overall director, Mike Downham. For Doug Bolton, Scott Yingling, and Kevin Nod, this is Darren Bowden speaking. On behalf of the Wolves who defeat the Bremerton Knights 32 to six here at Joe Knowles Field. We'll see you next week as the South Kitsap Wolves improve their record to three and one and the Bremerton Knights drop to 0 and four. Next week, we'll be back here at Joe Knowles Field here at South Kitsap High School as the South Kitsap Wolves take on Central Kitsap out of Silverdale. So long everybody and good night.